Hi, this is Craig and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. This one's gonna be a little different. I'm interjecting this episode in the middle of my transatlantic sailing series. If you haven't caught that series already, I'll put a link at the top to get you to that playlist. That transatlantic sailing series is a lot of footage and I probably have at least eight to 10 more episodes just to cover that three week transit. And all of that work and all of the previous work I've had where I've been pulling out my hair with uh, editing with this setup uh, made me buy a new computer and we'll get to that in a second. But let me just show you my workspace in my office the way it is right now. What I have here is starting from the left, this is my sound, my little sound shielded microphone where I do my voiceovers. This is my MacBook 13 inch from 2016, which was the last year they actually had an SD card slot in the side for your camera. Don't ask me why Apple would take that off the MacBooks that are there now. That makes no sense, makes you buy a dongle. Anybody who's a photographer or a videographer is going to use SD cards. But anyways, that's Apple's choice, not one that I would have made. And then because it's only a 13 inch screen, I went out and bought a 36 inch wide curved display to cover a lot more screen real estate than this tiny little screen. That's been a godsend. I mean, if I've tried editing on my boat in the uh, Lake Ontario in the summer on this, and when you only have this tiny bit of screen where you're trying to bring files in and you use Final Cut Pro and all the stuff on that little screen, it absolutely is, drives you nuts. So I had to have this, especially in my home office. I could edit in a crunch if I was you know, traveling nonstop. I could edit on this MacBook the way it is, but it takes a lot of getting used to, especially when you've had much bigger real, screen real estate. So that's the way I've got it set up. Of course, I've got some speakers to hear how it sounds. Uh, I also have a Bluetooth headset that I do a lot of my editing with to hear the final product if something's too loud or too quiet or if the music's too loud or too quiet. So I do all of that. And all of my editing, I'd say on average, some more, some less, each episode probably takes me, I mean, a concerted effort of eight hours to edit sometimes more if it depends on how long it is and how much 3d rendering and motion graphics and stuff i'm putting into it so that has been my setup for the last what year and a half that this channel has been around and i bought this macbook specifically for editing i didn't even have a macbook or any apple computer before i started this channel but i really wanted to work with final cut pro and that meant I had to buy a Mac or an iMac or something. So I ended up going with just the 13, which in hindsight was a mistake because the MacBook 15 has more processing power, quad core, better everything, better graphics card. So it would have probably saved me the aggravation that I've had so far with the 13 inch. Now, you know, if you follow my Facebook page, the Cruising Off Duty Facebook page, that I actually put out a call to action to see if anybody wants to help edit to take some of this workload off of me. Needless to say, this is not my full-time job. So me trying to pump out one to two episodes a week when you know each episode takes time to film, of course, and then you have to spend eight hours editing it and you're trying to do maybe two a week, that's, that's almost um, too much. So I do this channel not for the money, Needless to say, it loses money and hemorrhages badly money over all the stuff I bought. But I do it also for my own enjoyment and to turn these episodes into a uh, kind of like a time capsule of things that we've done, myself and Janice. And it's great that way. I mean, I'd love for the channel to make money or at least break even, but so far that's not happening. But sometimes you buy stuff just for your own enjoyment, in this case, for my own sanity, because editing on this has been hell. And here's the problem. I went out and bought, of course, originally my first good camera when I started the channel was a Panasonic GH4, which is a great camera. It shoots 4K, 30 frames per second, and in 1080 it shoots much higher for slow-mo and all that stuff. Then when the GH5 came out, it came out with in-body in -body image stabilization, which was a must for me because I was finding I'm always running gunning with my cameras, and when you're walking with the GH4, you can feel, you can see the, the screen shuttering every time you bounce. With the GH5, it had in-body image stabilization. It also matches up with lenses that are stabilized as well. And the combination makes a very smooth camera. So that's why I went to the GH5. So now I have the GH4 and the GH5. Now the GH5 shoots in 4K, of course, since the GH4 did, but it also shoots in 4K 60 frames per second. Herein lies the problem. I started realizing when I was shooting with these great cameras in 4K and then trying to bring them into this MacBook to edit, the MacBook came to a grinding halt. I mean, everything took so long. You'd drag something into the timeline and then it would try and render it and then you'd try and put motion graphics like 3D floating text and stuff on it and it would just be overwhelmed. Um, and so you'd sit there staring at the screen waiting for it to stop rendering so that you could see what you just did, whether it looked good or not. And I'm thinking of the eight hours it takes me to do a, an episode on average, 
it probably should only be five hours. It's just three hours is just me sitting there staring at the screen, which drives me insane. So much so that I tried to give away my editing to someone else and I was gonna just be the videographer and the, and the storyteller. But I realized very quickly after I let a couple of guys try to edit for me, that the editor is probably the most important job. I mean, really, if you think about it, the editor is the one that molds all this raw footage, this B-roll and, and talking head footage and, and this possible voiceovers that are gonna to need to be done and, and composes it into a coherent story that somebody's gonna find informative and entertaining. So if I hand that off to somebody else, I just give them all my footage and say, do what you think is right. A lot of times I was getting stuff back during my trial period and it's like, wasn't really what I was thinking of when I was filming it or you cut out scenes that I thought were really great and they never made it into the episode. So I realized that can't be done. I'm going to have to be my own editor and that's fine, but I got to take the aggravation level from here to down here. Cause actually editing's fun as long as things move along at a recent reasonably quick pace. So therein, therein lies what I had to come to a hard decision. I'm calling this my late Christmas present to myself. I've decided this is going to be just my backup computer in case my new computer goes on the, on the fritz. Um, but what I've gone out and bought is, oh, let's bring it over here. It's heavy. There we go. The new iMac Pro. Of course, it only comes in one size. That's a 27 inch 5K display. What I'm gonna do, I haven't even opened the box yet. I just came from the store. That's how much I love you guys. Just came straight from the store, didn't even open the box yet. Started recording, telling you about it. So that is gonna be my new computer and it's gonna go, oh, let me get it off screen here. It's gonna go where this MacBook is presently now. One problem I talked about with Thunderbolt 2 versus Thunderbolt 3 when I bought this in 2016, which is just a little a year and a half ago, the MacBooks and all the uh, Apple products came with a Thunderbolt 2, which is kind of a square plug um, attachment, which for speed, I think 10 megabytes per second with Thunderbolt 2. Uh, and this screen, which I went out and bought, was specifically designed to run off of Thunderbolt 2. It also has HDMI, of course, but Thunderbolt 2, no such thing as Thunderbolt 3 back then. And of course, now I buy this computer and they don't do Thunderbolt 2 anymore. Yay, I get to buy a dongle. So now I bought a $59 dongle to go from Thunderbolt 2 screen into a Thunderbolt 3 plug. So, you know, Apple and probably a year from now, they'll come up with a Thunderbolt 4 and then all our accessories will need dongles again. But anyways, that's the setup. So it's gonna be this screen, this computer, which comes with a 27 inch 5K screen, will have a second screen attached to it, which is the 36 inch ultra wide curved screen. It's gonna be awesome to have that much screen real estate. And more important, the screen real estate is gonna be the ability to drag things on, including 4K, including the highest res 4K, which is the GH5 does, 400 megabytes per second, 10-bit color. I mean, I won't even try that. I've tried the regular 4K lowest setting with the GH4 and GH5 on the Mac. And I mean, it, it will work, it doesn't crash, but oh my God, it takes forever. So. If you're trying to edit an episode of your channel on a MacBook Pro 13 inch and you're pulling your hair out like I was, that's probably time to upgrade because things are only gonna get more advanced as cameras come out. Right now, everybody's filming mostly with 264. There, Everybody is right now filming in 264. Uh, and now everybody, the new cameras are coming out with 265, which is a totally different codec. This new MacBook, I've done lots of research, will rip through that 265, no problem at all. This thing, probably not. Doesn't even handle regular 4K, so a higher codec, more compressed 4K, gonna even have more problems. So, let's get to it. I'll talk about all the specs when I open the box. Let's do an open box of this, and uh, we'll see what it looks like once I set it up. Hi, I'm back. Well, I needed to move out of my smaller office, so I had some arm room and whatnot to break this bad boy open, but I wanted to give you the specs of the one I got. So I got the iMac Pro Standard Edition. So there's a standard, which is eight core, then one step up is a 10 core, and in the future, they are not out yet, there's gonna be a 14 core and an 18 core. Leading us to say, this is gonna be such a huge jump from my 13 inch MacBook Pro that this is like going from a Toyota to a Ferrari. So this is a Ferrari, but it's the base model Ferrari, which is fine by me. It's probably plenty more computer than I'll ever need. Just going through the specs, of course, all uh, iMac Pros come with a 27 inch 5K display. There's no smaller version, like the iMacs that come in a 21 inch or 27 inch. This is 27 inch, there is no 21 inch. It comes with eight cores of Xeon W, which is a workstation processor. Turbo boosted from 3.2, it starts at 3.2 gigahertz standard, and turbo boosts up to 4.2 gigahertz. 
It's got 32 gigabytes of uh, super fast DDR4 ECC memory. It's got a super fast one terabyte SSD hard drive. So all this stuff's gonna make the computer just zip to life as soon as you ask it to do something. Now one terabyte for all the videographers out there is not gonna be enough to put all your different episodes on there. You're gonna to have to edit and then maybe the next episode you can continue to edit on that hard drive. Eventually you're gonna to have to start purging off some of the stuff off your one terabyte drive that's in your iMac and put it on a regular slower hard drive, which is fine, I already do that now. Uh, it comes with a 1080p FaceTime camera. Now this is a big upgrade. The regular iMacs come with a 720p front-facing camera. So now if you're gonna be doing live uh, YouTube, live Facebook, Skyping, anything, FaceTime, 1080p front-facing camera is gonna make it look crystal clear, which is awesome. It comes with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. It comes with four regular USB Type 3 ports. It comes with a new faster SDXC card slot, which is those SD cards you put from your camera into a slot. There's the older version, which only took one row of kind of copper or square pieces. Now there's two rows for the super fast cards. This is one of the super fast card readers. It comes with 10, 10 gigabyte ethernet port. Now I tend to not use with my MacBook, I just go Wi-Fi in my, my house, but I might actually have to try plugging into Ethernet to see if it makes a big difference with transferring files. It comes with the built-in stereo speakers. Now these speakers have been upgraded over the regular iMac. The regular iMac had decent speakers, but I hear these are like head and shoulders above that. They're deeper, richer, louder speakers. Also, I hear the screen, even though it says it's the same 5K 27 inch screen, supposedly there's it's brighter than the regular iMacs, um, more nits or something. Four microphones. The regular iMac has one microphone in the front by the camera. This one has four microphones. So things like Skyping and FaceTime and all these things should sound better. Um, it comes with, of course, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2. It comes with a keyboard. Now the regular iMac keyboard comes with just a regular keyboard and the numbers are at the top. This one comes with a regular keyboard and the number pad on the side. That's a different thing. And um, that's pretty much it. So let's break it open and see what it looks like outside of the box. So there's, like I say, the profile from the side. There is what it looks like on the front. Very pretty. Now let's break it open and see what she looks like. Okay. So. Ta-da! Alright, so now I've kind of seen some of these online already, and I know there's a lot of cardboard here. A lot more cardboard that used to be all styrofoam, a little smaller. It's pretty heavy with all the cardboard, but they're trying to be uh, uh, eco-friendly by making everything this brown cardboard so that you can recycle it. So in here you get the regular cord that goes into the back of your uh, iMac screen there. Nothing too exciting there. Make sure there's nothing else under there. Nothing. All this cardboard. Somebody else mentioned that too. All this cardboard for just a cord. So they did exactly try and streamline this. Okay. So next thing is the actual. This is it. Like you always worry about with normal computers, you've got the base computer and then you've got the screen. This is all in one. So I don't want to drop it. It's not that it's heavy, but considering everything's in here, it's it's heavier than a regular screen. So put that in there. I feel like there should be more here. Am I missing something? Ah, there it is. Oh, it's like, wait, where's my mouse? All right, so here's <laughs> my keyboard. So here's the uh, camera, this little slot in the top here. You can see that on that camera over there. There's a little slot in the gear under the cardboard, which you almost don't notice. And inside this is, oh, there you go, it slides out this way. So you slide out the keyboard, and there's what I was talking about. You got your magic mouse, which is, you can opt for a, a touchpad, one of those big uh, magic pads, but it just comes standard with a mouse. So it's gonna be like another $70 to not get the mouse and get the touchpad, uh, or you could get both, and in Canadian it was $199 to have the, both the mouse and the touchpad. You can always get the touchpad later. I figure I'll try doing it with just a mouse. I know on my MacBook, I use the touchpad on the MacBook for certain things, and I use the mouse for most other things, so it'll just take a little getting used to to just have a mouse, and if it doesn't work for me, I can always go back to the store, and of course, Apple is more than happy to take my money and give me a trackpad later. This is what I was talking about with the keyboard. So the show that camera there. So this keyboard, ooh, static sound. 
This keyboard is wider than the standard Mac keyboard. The standard Mac keyboard stops, or iMac stops here. And then they put the numbers up on the top where the function keys are. So it's really quite small. This one has the number pad on the side, so it's a much wider keyboard. And that, I believe, oh, that's right, it's not everything. So in here is your little documentation and your black stickers. It comes with and a cloth to wipe your screen. And because it's a charcoal colored Mac, instead of a iMac being kind of silver, they give you black stickers instead of silver stickers. There we go. And I'll read that stuff later. Here's another thing that's kind of cool. So not only is, well, I'll unveil this in a second. Everything about this new iMac Pro is black, including you get your iPhone or whatever lightning connector uh, is black. They've always come white, and this is the only product they've ever shipped that comes with black. All right, so let's get all this cardboard out of the way. All right, so now the unveiling of the big thing. Okay, so there's some, it's not even like, it's not even like plastic like you'd expect it to be. It's more like a cloth. They're really going eco-friendly here. So it's like a, it's like a cloth over top of this on a sleeve and voila. Oh, there's the plastic. Okay, so cloth over top, I guess, to stop any chance of scratching the screen. And then we go around the back here. This is just sort of stuck on there. Well, I guess there is a bit of a, like, a stickiness. I thought maybe it was just on there with static electricity. So no. I just like tape on the edge. So there you go. Beautiful. And then you have this little sticker over your black, glossy, beautiful looking Apple logo. So this is how it's going to look when it's done. I'll put it the way it is. So you've got your screen, which is also your computer, your keyboard, and your Mac OS. And voila, that's the way it'll look. Now one thing I wanted to show you, in case you haven't seen this online already, the difference between this MacBook or iMac and the other iMacs is the other iMacs you actually had a little door here that you could you could pull the door open and change how much RAM there was. This one comes from the factory sealed. There's no door, and the reasoning Apple says is this thing is so much power more powerful that they put two big fans in here, and as you can see, the vents that blow out are here, and I don't know, you won't be able to see it, but underneath here, just take my word for it, underneath here where my fingers are showing. There's in intakes. Maybe I can lift it and show you. So at the bottom here is where the air comes in, and then these vents here are where the air comes out. So if they put a door there so you could access the RAM, it would disturb the airflow. And it's more important that this bad boy stays cool than I upgrade the RAM. It came with 32 standard. You could upgrade to 64 or 128, but it was a big jump in price to, to add more RAM. Now I've already seen somebody online. These are upgradable. There's a kind of a glue or a tape that holds this glass on. Down the road, here's what you can do. You can get yourself the basic iMac Pro like I did. And if three years from now it starts to slow down, you get somebody to pop this glass off. And everything in here is not soldered, it's screwed in. So your CPU can be upgraded, your memory can be upgraded, even your, uh, your hard drive, your SSDs. Which right now it's two 500 gigabytes to add up to one terabyte. If you get the two terabyte version, all it is is two one gigabyte SSDs. And if you get the four, it's two, two terabytes. So there's two ports, two, two areas they put the hard drives in. They split them in half to make the total. So when you open this and go to YouTube, there's a guy who's already done it. Pop this open and everything is, just comes unscrewed and can pull out, you can put new stuff in. So, like I said, I already feel like I've got the Ferrari here, so I'm not complaining that it's not fast enough. But if it, three years or four years from now, I then start saying, geez, I wish it was a little faster. If you've still got a great 5K display and you're happy with it, you pop the glass off and you upgrade it. So there you go. So that's the end. I'll put it in my office and what I'll do is I'll give you an update in a couple of weeks after I've done two or three more episodes with this and I'll tell you how much of an improvement it is. Hopefully for the money, it's been a huge improvement. So that's it for now. I'll talk to you later. Well, hopefully you found this episode informative and understand a little bit why I needed to get it. Usually I'm just pissed off with my MacBook. Then I get frustrated with my MacBook at how long it's taking to do anything. And then I start to lose my mind a little bit about my MacBook taking forever. And finally I just splurge and buy a brand new iMac Pro. Looks like a face of one happy editor. I'll let you know in a couple of weeks how it's been going after I've gotten two, three, maybe four episodes under my belt. 
So until then, I'll talk to you later.